Hey guys, it's YXBA here, and in this segment of my interview with Dennis Dyack, we really focused in on some of our favorite movies, as well as a really good story that he had to say. I really hope that you enjoy this segment. It doesn't talk about video games, but I imagine that if you guys like the same games as me, you will probably get something out of this interview as well. Well, I've been talking to you for a while now leading up to this actual interview and I've been finding that we like some of the same movies. Well, f first of all, I think Contact is one of those movies and, and I believe you do have kind of an interesting story to tell about that movie and maybe how it relates to some of the guys over at IGN. Yeah, well, some of the past guys from IGN. Very interesting story. It's actually got several, <laughs> several things uh, related to it. And of recent note, too. So I'm a huge, I love Contact. It's one of my favorite movies for several reasons as far as science fiction goes. And I guess the most important one, are, there's a couple important ones. It uses real science. And very rarely do you get a chance to see real science in film. You, you often get science fantasy, things that aren't really, as far as we can tell, you know, just things that are just made up. And it's more of a a space opera than it is real scientific theory where contact was not like that contact you know writ uh, based on a book written by carl sagan was really grounded in hard science on top of that it's also and this is my personal opinion now but it's also deals with the subject matter of where science is not mutually exclusive from spirituality it asks the questions of is there a god and is there life on other places and doesn't try to answer the question because science doesn't answer that question. Science doesn't disprove or prove God. And I find that that stuff is particularly extremely interesting to me. So that's sort of the first part of it. I didn't know if you wanted to jump in there. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you there. I think there is something very interesting about, you know, where science ends and where religion and spirituality begins. And I, I think actually a, a recent movie that I watched, I don't know if you were a fan of this or not, that really kind of got into that was uh, Prometheus. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I bet you're a fan of that movie because <laughs> it was so I, cool. <laughs> well, so how do I feel about Prometheus? I'm a massive, massive Ridley Scott fan. And I really love his work a ton. I'm a huge alien fan. I love the alien stuff. And when I heard about Prometheus, I frankly have never been more excited about a movie since Blade Runner, which we talked about is our mutual favorite movie of all time. I love Blade Runner. Yeah. I, these, these are the kind of things that, things that are provocative and, you know, leave you with a, a significant catharsis where you think about the movie days and days later. And so Prometheus, though, it was beautifully shot, amazing visually. I think some of the scripting was a little weak and was disappointing for me. Mm -hmm. But the entire background of research literally blew me away. And for those who, and only because a lot of the stuff that we're working on right now touches on similar subjects of ancient history, ancient technologies, Nephilim. If you look at the engineers, there's a lot of historic research that describes giants just like the engineers. It's crazy. And when I was watching that movie, I was like, I was in awe of it. And the more at first I was, like I said, I was a little disappointed, but the more I watched it, the more I felt really strongly that whoever had done the research, whether it was Ridley Scott and his team of people, they kind of knocked it out of the park with that stuff. And it was amazing from that perspective for me. Yeah, I agree. Like it's not up there with maybe some of my other favorite movies of all time, but for a movie that was made recently, I thought it was pretty good pretty provocative and a little bit edgy i've seen the alien movies but i'm not really really well versed in how it all connects with prometheus but it seemed yeah. like they kind of just threw in the alien stuff at a certain point of that movie like it could have easily not been an aliens movie i don't know what your thoughts are on that it, it, that's a hard call because it looks like a production process thing. I know at, so you've got the pressure of the studios at wanting to sell the Alien franchise being huge. And then you've got Ridley's vision and the people who research this wanting to take it in a certain direction. And 
I think you get a combination of that. So I'm only guessing though. It's only speculation and I hate to speculate on these kind of things, but I'm looking forward to seeing where they take the next one. And I know they've got another aliens movie coming out as well. So, but Hey, let me go back to contact to sort of bring yeah. the story. For those who don't know, I hang out with Matt Casamassina, who used to be at IGN and Mark Bozon, who's, who are both at Apple now. And we've become good friends over time. And, <laughs> It's kind of within the group and within the group of friends, also friends that so are still at IGN as well. We call it sort of the, the contact litmus test. We just ask people, what do you think of contact? <laughs> and if they go, oh, it's boring, and you just were kind of like, okay. But if they go, I loved it, I thought it was really thought-provoking, it was a really good movie, We, it's a really good litmus test if we're going to get along with those people. And when when you were saying, like when we were talking just back and forth, that's why I asked you about contact, and you went, you were hesitant and you went, I really liked it. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> because I think that movie speaks volumes about where mankind uh, really needs to develop itself. And that movie highlighted all this technology and all the things that we're doing, all the things that we see with technology these days. We're not our social development is not moving as quickly and we're going to reach a crisis at some point where things like contact can happen, where you can actually contact another race and have no one want to believe it because of the cognitive dissonance of what they believe so strongly, as opposed to all the facts, they'll just fight it tooth and nail to hide it. And the reason I mentioned contact, and this is something that I, I think some people on your channel will find interesting, Quantum Entanglement Entertainment, QE, partnered with the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics, about almost, well, last October. And they're going to advise us on all the science for the games that we're working on and for the television series and the films we're working on. So we're going to have real people. And, and this, the Perimeter Institute has people like Stephen Hawkins and some of the best quantum physicists in the world are part of this institute. It's a really amazing place. And I was actually this week at a conference called Time in Cosmology. And the conference itself was very interesting from the standpoint of there's often conferences on cosmology alone and often conferences on time alone for quantum physicists. But they decided to combine these to start asking age old questions like, what is the arrow of time? Why have we made the assumption that time is always moving forward? Is time an illusion? So I was able to talk to some of the top quantum physicists in the world for our channel, for the quantum tunnel. It was amazing. They blew my mind. Like these people are so, so intelligent. And they came from all over the world for this conference. And I met one scientist who who was a dancer. And she was a dancer for a while. And then she read the book Contact by Carl Sagan. And she decided to get into quantum physics. <laughs> and now she's one of the best quantum physicists in the world because of that piece. So it, it's just, I just, yeah. And so that's why contact from and I told her that and so we talked about contact for about 20 minutes just imagine one of the smartest people in the world that talks about dark matter and can write, write equations that I would never probably be able to understand is talking about a movie that inspired her the same way that it inspired me and our group of friends like Matt Casamassina, Mark Bozon and, and others and it just for me gives me great hope some of these greatest minds get it and they're trying to solve big problems that are like not how to improve the, the, the life of a battery by 20%, but they're trying to figure out what does it mean to be human? And at this conference, interestingly enough, mm -hmm. they didn't just have quantum physicists. They had historians, they had philosophers. It was incredible. And what I noticed there is that they embrace cognitive dissonance which is a really tough thing i have noticed over over my period of being in the games industry if i start talking uh, i started talking about cloud computing in 2007 a one console future in 2006 and i was presenting facts to people that did not fit with their worldview of things and people got really angry and a lot of the press really hammered on me and it's presenting these things in a way that you, you present things and people are like, but the world doesn't work like that. These people at the Perimeter Institute deal with this all the time. When you start saying things like dark matter, as an example, 
<laughs> is encompasses most of the universe. We only know 5% of our universe that we can see, or whatever the percentage is. Dark matter, m- most of the universe is made up of dark matter, which we mm-hmm. firstly know nothing about. So sort of go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I, I have a hard time with uh, stuff like that, like wrapping my mind around the entirety of the universe. Just the concept that there actually is an entirety of the universe. That at some point, if you would go far enough out, that the universe would literally come to an end. And what would that look like? Would it be like an invisible wall on a video game? Well, these are some of the concepts that they deal with, right? And their cosmology is looking at the forest and not the trees. They ask questions like, what was before the Big Bang? If there even was a Big Bang, what came before it? What came after it? What what is expansionism in the universe? Like, all of these massive questions. (laughs) And, you know, when we think about, I don't know for those people out there who are listening, if they heard about graviton waves. When you speak to graviton waves with these kind of people, for them, it was one of the watershed moments in science where they had all these theories of what was going on and graviton waves laid a foundation for what they've been working on for years that yes it could all be true and it was amazing to see that and i think a lot of people don't even know what graviton waves are but it was an incredible breakthrough so it's people like this that are trying to improve things for to have a conference like this to try and improve things for mankind that I find so inspirational. And and when, when we're working on our future games, like if you look at things like Eternal Darkness or To Human, even Legacy of Cain, there's elements of history, science, and technology all through it. I'm a big believer in movies like Contact, like Blade Runner, like like Interstellar, right? Yeah. It's been research. And, and even though Prometheus wasn't as awesome as I'd hoped it would be, there's that underlying framework there that says, well, they put a lot of research into this and I can dig it. And it's those kind of things that excite me about entertainment. And uh, moving forward, I had a lot of epiphanies at this conference. And I'll tell you, I, I am so excited to be able to work with these uh, people in the future for our games and stuff. So I, and hopefully gamers will find it interesting as well. Yeah, I think there's just like a this kind of like a divide when it comes to content to consumers and movie watchers. I mean, I think there's a group of people like us who like content that actually asks more questions than gives answers. Mm -hmm. If I watch a movie and it totally changes the way I think about something and all of a sudden it creates like a whole group of unanswered questions that I didn't even know existed, my mind will just keep going for days on yep. on that and i find it really really interesting whereas other people out there they just don't you know they don't get it they don't get why like they should have had a proper ending they, you know there should have been a conclusion where they literally told you how how things exactly wrapped up yeah but yeah. i was just gonna say like i'm gonna i'm gonna list uh a few more movies that are some of my favorite movies um and i want to see what your reaction is to them sure um 13th floor i have not seen that movie though i've heard oh, of okay it. It's awesome. <laughs> okay, I will. It is on my list. Yeah, it's uh, especially as a game designer. I think you should definitely watch that movie. Okay. It's about basically like a virtual reality world, and it really gets into you know where you start to feel really a connection to the AI characters in a virtual reality world, and you start to question how fair this is to them at this point. Huh. Um, you know, like if they're so conscious that they can understand the world and maybe wonder if their world is fake or not. It almost starts to be cruel in a replicant kind of a Blade Runner-ish way, right? That's that's what the Turing test is all about. And it's all about should artificial intelligence. Yeah, it sounds great. I haven't seen yeah. it, but that sounds amazing. So I'll check it out. For okay. Sure. Another one of my favorites is Dark City. Oh, I love Dark City. Yeah. <laughs> Mixing paint. Yeah, it's just amazing. Like, it takes some of my favorite things and all melds them together. Noir is really, really something that I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, stylistically. Mm-hmm. And then you get the whole, like, sci-fi and and just mind-blowing questions that the, the movie asks. Uh, you know, I don't know mm-hmm. what your thoughts are, but that's definitely one of my favorites uh, as well. 
I like that movie a lot. I like that movie a lot. It's very, very well done. Leaves an impression. Makes you think about it after it's done. Yeah, very good. Absolutely. Yeah. And then another, my last uh, pick for the day is uh, Gattaca. Interesting. I liked Gattaca a lot. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah, I thought I thought that was also an excellent movie. It makes me it makes me want to fire off a few movies that I think you may like, and if the audience likes these kind of movies, they might want to check these out. Have you ever heard of a movie called Jacob's Ladder? I don't believe so. You should watch Jacob's Ladder. It's it's a very very good movie where it was one of those movies that I, it was a very painful experience up until the end until I figured out what was going on. It was just frustrating. I was like, what, what in the hell is going on in this movie? And then when it all came together, I, I was godsmacked. I was like, oh, that was amazing. And I remember when I was talking to Kojima song about this, he loves it too. And when we were working on Metal Gear Solid, I asked him, like, I, I do, as you can tell, I do this a lot. What movies do you like? <laughs> and I mentioned Jacob's Ladder and he was like, Psycho Mantis, dude, come on. And if you see some of the things in Psycho Mantis where he's like shaking his head and stuff, inspired from Jacob's Ladder. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's man, there's a there's a bunch. So one of the more recent movies that I really like, which I consider kind of a meta movie. I don't know if you saw saw it, but I strongly recommend it for those who may not have seen it. It's called Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, I think that? I saw that one. Yeah, I who directed that one again. I know it was done by, oh, what's the guy who was running the Marvel franchise for a while? I'm blanking on his name. Yeah. I do something. Yeah, it was um, the guy that did the Avengers in that, right? Yeah, he yeah, was I, leading. I watched he was kind of like movie. a showrunner. Yeah, it's quite good. I really liked that movie. I liked how it was kind of Lovecraftian and at the same time uh, really spoke. Really, a, it was kind of a horror half comedy, half horror, but in some ways it was just very, very interesting stuff. Wasn't that a little um, bit of a remake of uh, Night of the Living Dead? A little bit? Uh, I don't or, think so. Really. I don't think okay. so. I don't think so. Um, I know the movie was held for several years, and I can't remember why. It was like something. I can't remember what happened, but it. A lot of the, well, at least some of the actors became stars later, but they're extremely young in this movie, and it, it's it's quite a good movie. I like it personally quite a bit. So, but you know that's me. <laughs> yeah. No, I liked it as well. I hope you guys enjoyed today's segment with Dennis Dyack from Quantum Entanglement Entertainment. If you would like to hear more from him, please check out his YouTube channel called The Quantum Tunnel, and I will make sure to leave a link in the description below.